Okay, now let's start this webinar. Uh, good morning and welcome you all in this AI 900 session. Archie this year, I'm a host for this session. Guys, if you have any question and queries, please put question on the uh, chat box. We will be there to help you out. Now moving ahead and talking about our event sponsor that is Synergetics. So Synergetics is an India one of kind co porting running solution company. Now you will get a question like who we are and what we're doing. So answering your question, we Bruce Road offering and also give comprehensive advice advisory service to client who wish to modernize their program. We also educate, adv advise and implement and manage. Then the synergetic solution offering that is persona based onboarding solution, onboarding add-on solution, certification solution, certification add-on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales pre-sales training solution, practice playbook solution and architecting solution. Then what does Microsoft certification does? It will give you complete learning experience. You will get trained to build food appear for the exam and get certified. Uh, this is skilling journey here. You can advance yourself. First, you have to complete fundamental certification. Then you can go with the advanced role based certification and expert level certification. In fundamental level certification, we are providing you AZ 900, AI 900, DP 900, PL 900, SC 900. In associate level certification, we are providing you many types of certification. That is uh, 104, uh, 204, AZ 500, and uh, here you can see on my screen. In expert level certification, we are providing you AZ305, SC100, PL600, and AZ400. Also, we have special certification that is AZ120, AZ140, and AZ220. If you want any certification, you can connect with us. I already share contact details on chat box. So certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skills. Also, we do provide certification add-on, onboarding add-on like short duration modules and more. Then moving ahead, to, then moving ahead, today training is organized and handled by the ATC community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in our cloud technology and various emerging technology. Under ATC community, we have emerging technology community for all. Then Azotic community for Punekas. Emerging Technology Community for Suratkas, Azure Tech Community for Pune Nagpurkas. Guys, you just have to install the Meetup app and you can uh, follow our communities there. Then you have to follow Code of Conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Please note, uh, participants are not allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. We will try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel. Then uh, today's speaker for this training is Mansi Sahane. She is a Microsoft certified trainer and currently work with Synergetics as a trainer consultant. Agenda for this webinar, you will get know more about the topic and benefit of it. In one day webinar, we are providing you full day workshop. Uh, then coming with the self learning plan, we are providing you complimentary learning achievement best. You just have to follow the step and you will get the activated best. Then mentoring and exam prep session. If you have any question, you can submit your question on our feedback form. Then coming coming with the knowledge assessment. Before end of this session, we are providing you assessment link. You can give your uh, exam and test your knowledge. Here you can see AI, we are providing you AI 900 learning achievement badge. Uh, we already mentioned the step on screen. You just have to follow the step and you will get the activated badge. Make sure guys you follow us on our LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube for upcoming webinar uh, update and information. Uh, thank you. Now I would like to hand over this mic our speaker. She will continue ahead. Thank you, Archie. A very good morning to everyone. Uh, thank you for attending this one day webinar on AI 900. So before we get into the session, I want to give you all an overview of what we are going to learn uh, in today's session. And um, uh, Archie, am I audible? Yes. Archie? Okay, great. So yeah, so I'm going to give you an overview of what we are going to do. It's not a training training session because we, can't, we don't have much time to go in depth I can't help you with the 
demos or anything. Okay, so we I will be teaching concepts and I will be doing some demos. Okay, so I planned some three demos to show you. And yeah, that's it. So before we get into this training, let me talk about what is AI 900 and uh, what are we going to learn. And then uh, we will move with module one. Archie, is my screen visible? Yes. Okay, great. So moving ahead. So this training is fully about AI fundamentals. Okay. We all know since uh, OpenAI has launched its models, the large language models, whether it's chat GPT or DALI or n number of models, AI has become more and more popular. It's not that AI was never there. It was always present. OK, we all know through uh, we when we go or travel somewhere, right? We you, uh, let's say you've gone to a country like Germany or France. There people generally don't speak English, right? They have their own na native language or even for us. Right, we speak Hindi, or uh, in some states they have their own regional languages. Right, whether it's uh, Punjabi, Haryanvi, Rajasthani, Gujarati, or the down south you have Malayali, Kannada, and Telugu, Tamil, etc. Right, so there we kind of face problems. Right, we don't understand their language, they don't understand our language. Right, so what do we do? We go, okay, we open this app called Google Translator or go online, search what does this mean. First type in our language and then it gets translated to whatever language you want, right? So what is that? That is nothing but AI, right? It is nothing but AI or not, not just type, you speak out. And let's say you speak in English and you want it to be translated to German language or to French language or to Spanish language, right? So that is also AI. Right. Another thing like now, nowadays, if you uh, travel to the airport, OK, normally uh, uh, there were there used to be the security, right? You had to show yourself in the camera and you have to identify yourself. You have to carry an identity card to prove that it is you. Right. But normally now what they do, they kind of capture your face. At the beginning of the airport, OK, they capture your face and next time whenever you come, you don't have to do that security and everything because your face has been captured. So through the facial features, through the facial recognition. Right, you are kind of identified. So that again is nothing but artificial intelligence. OK, so artificial intelligence is something that is not new. It is. It was discovered back in the 1960s or in the 1970s. OK. And from then it has been evolving, evolving and evolving. Right. We have we have these voice uh, command uh, machines as well, like Alexa, Google. Right. Who, uh, whatever we command that we give, they execute that command. Right. So it's not new. It is very much there, but just now by the popularity is because of open AI. So what is basically AI 900? So whenever you see a 900, OK, uh, number 900, OK, that means it is a fundamental certification, OK, whether it's SC 900, AZ 900, DP 900 or AI 900. OK, so AI generally is the artificial intelligence certification series of Microsoft um, of Microsoft Azure. OK, so basically what we are going to do over here, we are going to see the different services related to AI on Azure. OK, there are people who don't know how to code. There are people who know how to code and coding is very important in AI. OK, so. There are ways in which people who don't know how to code can also create models, train models. OK, people who know code can also do the same thing is what basically this 
thing covers. Okay, so this is what it is. We are going to see the different services. Okay, in on Azure platform using the Azure platform. Okay, pertaining to AI. So, like Archie said. Just one minute. Yeah. So, like Archie said, my name is Manasi Shahane, and I'm a trainer consultant with Synergetics for the past five years almost. And I've been training in data and AI. This is my specialty, my domain. Okay. And I am a Microsoft certified trainer. And uh, yeah, so I've been training, conducting webinars, consulting, helping people, okay, on these technologies, whether it's in data or Azure data services or AI services on Azure, okay. So now I would like to hear from you all, okay, because this is, like I said, we are going to learn AI services on Azure, okay. So it is required that you know a little bit about Azure, Okay, what is Azure? Um, what is uh, what is a resource group and etc. What is a subscription? So let me know in the chat box. Okay, what is your understanding of uh, what is your understanding of resource groups? Do you know about it? Do you not know about it? Because it will help me divert the webinar in that direction. Okay, so uh, I will give you all time if you all can put it in the chat box very quickly. Let me know about. Do you all know what is a resource group? What is a resource? What is a subscription? What is the difference between IAS, PaaS, and SaaS? Okay, so let me know in the chat box very quickly your name and whatever. Uh, like I asked the questions right now, so if it would be really beneficial for me. Okay, so I'm giving you all two, three minutes. Guys, please go ahead and put all these details in the chat box. Yes, guys, I'm waiting for your answer. Yes, no. Do you know what is a resource group? What is a subscription? Have, do you all have any knowledge on Azure platform? Because it is going to be vital for this training. Okay, uh, because if you don't know that, then I will have to, first of all, focus on that. Okay, and then we can proceed ahead. So let me know whether you have any understanding of these terms that I just took. Resource group, what is IAS, PaaS, SaaS, um, subscription, and etc. Okay, I can see only two people. What about the rest? Guys, there are 45 people in this chat group. Let me know. Okay. Okay, I can see that not many people know about it. Don't worry, we will be we I'll do a quick overview of that and explain it in short. Okay, before we start with module one. Okay. So moving ahead, what is basically AI 900? Okay. So uh, like I said, it is a Microsoft, I mean it's for um uh it's a fundamental this thing, okay, and this particular um Certification is uh, divided into five modules. Okay, so we are going to see five modules today. Uh, I'll just, uh, because it's like a webinar, not a training training. So I will be giving you an overview of it. We will not be going much in depth. Okay, because I have demos planned also, and we have a lot of activities as well. Okay, so um, we are going to do module one, module two uh, before the lunch break, and then the remaining three modules after that. OK, so basically um, it has five modules. OK, and uh, this is how we intend to do. These are the five modules. So very first is the introduction, very basic. OK, we are going to do the basic of artificial intelligence, what it is, what are the different workloads, etc. Then we will go on taking one more workload individually. OK, what is machine learning? What is uh, knowledge base? What is NLP? 
okay what is generative ai what is deep learning etc all of that we are going to cover in the next module so every workload has a module dedicated to it like machine learning has one module uh, deep learning has one module then generative ai has one module okay so that's what we are basically going to see and this is how we intend to go about Okay, so like we have started, so I'm going to give you a short break after we complete one module, two modules. Okay, so I'll give you a short 20 minute break. And then once that is done, we'll move to the next module. Then you'll get a lunch break of one hour. Okay, and once we come back from the lunch, we'll do some more modules. Then go again for a tea or a coffee break around four o'clock. Okay, again, 20 minute break. And then we will summarize. We will stop the session. We'll complete the last module. And then we have a assessment at the end. OK, uh, so that you all can just check your knowledge. It's not hard and fast rule that, OK, you know, you're going to excel at it. It's just a free assessment that we are giving out to you just so that you can, you know, in the future, uh, in case you want to study this, you know where and how much you need to study. OK, that is what we are. This is what we plan and then we will be ending the session. OK, as it is Saturday, I, tr I will try and uh, we'll try and complete the training or sorry, the webinar as fast as possible so that you all can enjoy the rest of the evening. OK, so this is what we plan. So this I will be talking about towards the end from where you can study. This is the learn path. OK, you can have a path customized for yourself. OK, uh, we will be uh, I will be talking about it, where to go. I will share the link as well with you all in the chat box okay <clears throat> and then of course we are i will be talking about this as well <clears throat> and like archie said we will be sharing our achievement we will be sharing a badge with you all which is like a certificate that you attended this training okay which you can share on linkedin okay with people you can add it to your resume cvs that is fine okay so we will be talking about that uh, later on, so uh, don't drop out. You this particular achievement badge that we give carries a lot of value. Okay, so in order to get that, please stay in the session. And then, of course, uh, how you can get yourself certified. I will be talking about that. I will be telling you all where you can uh, go ahead and schedule the exam once you have studied from the links that I have shared. Okay, once you think you are confident enough, you know you can appear for the exam i will be telling you all where to go and how to give it and of course what is the cost of the exam uh, a little bit about the exam i will be talking once we complete module five coming to the exam this is the distribution or the weightage like i said there are five um modules and each module you can see there is some weightage they're all equally important okay they carry the same weightage that is there so that means 15 to 20 percent you can say questions come from all the modules okay so since this is ai you know things change a little bit uh technology we all know keeps on changing so you have to be very careful uh, whenever you give the exam make sure you go again do the learn path because there are a few new updates that come in and microsoft uh, does a regular update. So I will talk about that also towards the end. OK, so this is a little bit about the AI 900 and, to, and during the training. I will uh, during the webinar, I will be talking about uh, all of this so you don't have to worry much. OK, so moving ahead, I saw that people don't know what is a resource group, what is IAS, PaaS, SAS. They are not aware about uh, um, Subscription. So let's just uh, talk about it in, I mean, just a little bit about that. I will talk. Okay. So because we will be requiring uh, this particular uh, knowledge, okay, um, when we create services on Azure, okay, we will be requiring uh, this particular knowledge. So uh, basically, we all know cloud. Cloud is nothing but, uh, you know, deploying or creating services, okay, on over the internet, okay, like services like what you can say, virtual machines. 
storage accounts. Databases, data warehouses. Okay, so these are the things that you can create. Okay, but over the internet. Okay, this is what is basically cloud computing or cloud. Now, cloud has three different services. Okay, three different services. One is your infrastructure. As a service. Now, what does infrastructure as a service or IAS mean? Okay, it is something where you get the maximum flexibility. Okay, now whenever you are creating an application or let's say even a website, right? Generally, what happens is that you require something called as servers, right? We have all heard about this term. Servers where our application apps or websites are basically running. To put it simply, okay, this is where we actually deploy or create, or this is where it is actually running our apps or websites, any company you take, okay, whether it's Google, whether it's Meta, okay, they have servers, okay, and, and on top of those servers, you have these applications or websites that are running, right? So let's say I want uh, to configure these servers, okay? Configure the physical aspect or the physical resources that I will require to in order to deploy my application or websites. I want full flexibility. I want to decide, okay, uh, what kind of what what kind of uh, um, memory size do I need? Okay, you get the flexibility to decide the memory size. What kind of a operating system? Okay, what kind of OS will you require? Whether it's a Linux OS or a Windows OS, what kind of OS you want, you decide, you get the flexibility. OK, then you decide whom to give access, whom not to give access, decide the identity and the access. OK, you know, we know that there are people who you don't want to give access to this application or to this website or to the database or to the data warehouse. Right. There can be like if it's a HR data, why give access to all the employees? You will only give it to the HR team. Right. So in that case, if you want to restrict that access, OK, you can even do that. So you have the flexibility to do that. So you decide the identity. And access. OK, so this is what is called as a infrastructure as a service. Basically, you are looking at the physical. Resources, not at the cloud side, OK, where you actually um, where your servers are actually present, okay? And where your servers are actually present is called as a region, okay? So a region is like a geographical location on Earth, okay? It's actually a location on Earth where you have these buildings full of servers, okay? It is like you have these servers, okay, that will be present in, and where it will be, it will be in a region. So as your has around 60 plus regions, okay? Now regions, what, what are they? Like you have US region, you have Australia region, you have India region, okay? That is nothing but regions. They are actual locations. If you go to that location, you will actually find servers that are being maintained by Azure, okay? So where, where you actually deploy your apps and websites, it's actually in these regions which have these servers. OK, so this is what is region in their actual location on uh, Earth. And this is where you this. So this whatever servers are there at the region, OK, it is taken care by the cloud service provider or the CSPs that we call. Top 
platform, it is CSPs. Okay, so they manage the physical requirement at the region level at the uh, yeah at the region level. But let's say you want a server where you have the flexibility. Okay, that is basically called as a virtual machine. Okay, we all know virtual machine is some is like a exact replica of your physical machine like your laptops or desktops or etc. So if you want to configure, like I said, the memory, the operating system, who should get what access, etc. Okay, then you would you're basically creating a virtual machine. So an example of IAS is nothing but a virtual machine. Okay, so VM. Clear? Now coming to platform as a service. Which is called as PaaS. Now what is platform as a service? So like I told you in IAS, you get the full flexibility to decide the physical. Uh, one second. You decide the physical infrastructure, what should be the memory size, what should be uh, the operating system and identity and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. All of this you manage, correct? So let's say you don't want that to manage. You don't want to manage the memory, how much memory it is using. Okay. You don't want to decide the operating system. All you want to focus is on configuring the application. Okay. And just the data that you put in the application. Okay, here also you can decide the data. Okay, what kind of data? Like now you have a VM and you want to um, install Python application. So it is up to you. You decide. Or a Java application. It is up to you. Okay, or you want to, you know, have multiple, like you want to create a microservice. You can do that. It is up to you. Okay, but let's say you don't want to do that also you want the cloud service provider to take care of it all you do is you configure the application okay i want it in this region i want uh the uh i want uh yeah just that and you are sorted so you don't have to worry about how much memory i need what should be the operating system or uh what should be the yeah identity access again it's in your hand OK, it's not taken care by the cloud service provider. Security is in your hand. OK, all those things come into your hand. Just the physical resources that are required or the physical infrastructure. That is required. You don't manage. It is taken care by the CSP. What you manage? Is the application what kind of like now in Azure? Okay, uh, when you create a database or a C, like we all know SQL Server, right? SQL database, SQL Server. So the equivalent service on Azure is the SQL database. Okay, this is the server. I mean, this is the database that you create. Okay, it is equivalent to the SQL Server of Microsoft. OK, so in whenever you are creating the SQL database, let's say on your local machine, you don't want to create a SQL server. OK, you don't want to install that application, install the database and then create tables. Instead, you what you do, you put it on the cloud. OK, you just decide the region. OK, and you kind of then. Create this, so this service in Azure is a pass service. OK, here you just do basic configurations of the application and then inside the database, what kind of data was you manage, you create the tables, you put in the data inside that rest is taken care by your cloud service provider. OK, so this is what basically is platform as a service and majority of the services, even your Azure. AI services or as your machine learning studio that we are going to see are all platform as a service. They are all pass in nature. 
Okay, majority of the services on Azure are generally are pass actually, except for virtual machines. Uh, uh, there is nothing that is uh, IAS. Everything is pass. Okay, so you don't know what kind of uh, operating system, memory, and uh, what is the scalability of that. Nothing you are aware about. Okay, that is taken care by your cloud service provider. Whereas here. You configure the scalability, you configure the operating system and etc. All that is in your hand. So this is IAS, then you have PaaS, okay? Then you have something called as software, as a service, which is SaaS, short form. And the classic example of SaaS is M365 or Office 365, okay? We all use this on a daily basis. Right, our Word, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint, Teams, okay, Outlook, without which nobody works nowadays, right, is nothing but software as a service. So, in software as a service, okay, you kind of get it as a web, uh, like a web app or a mobile or a desktop app, right? We all have this. All you need is what you need. A license, correct, in order to use those applications. So here you just have to manage the data in what file, what are you going to type in Excel, what kind of sheets are you going to make in PowerPoint, what kind of presentations are you going to make? It's up to you. You're just using the application, right? It's not that you have created the application, you have configured the application, correct? It's not that, right? You get the flexibility to just put in the data all you need is a license if you have the license then you can use those application inside the service right you don't have to worry about what size of memory is required it is all taken care in the background okay the moment you say install the application gets installed and it is all taken care in the background right with the container and whatever those things i'm not going to go in depth but you don't have to worry about that you just have to start using the application so that is what is software as a service okay so this is the classic example even your emails or whatever that are there right this is a software as a service okay so these are the services and like i said your azure ai or azure machine learning studio that we are going to see is all basically platform as a service so the moment we i show you demos i think this concept will become more clear to you all okay now, another thing on Azure you need to know is something called as a resource. Uh, before I cover resource group, let me talk about subscription. So what is a subscription? So a subscription, we all know, like we all use OTD platforms, right? Whether it's Netflix, Amazon, Hotstar, Disney Plus, Hotstar, right? Uh, Sony Live, etc. So in order to use those um ODT platforms, we need to log in, right? Whether it's free, okay, or paid, you need to create your own uh, login ID and you need to have a trial associated or something associated to it, which actually tracks your bills. Whether it's free, so free, you don't get full services. It understands, okay, you haven't paid. So you will not, you will be shown ads. You will be uh, not, uh, you will not be able to access majority of the content, right? Only free things you can access. Whereas if you go for the paid version, you get ad free. Okay. You can access majority of the content, right? This is what is the difference. So if I want to track my billing, okay, my limit till where I can use the Azure resources. For that, we require a subscription. And subscription varies for different people. Okay, you can use a pay as you go model. You like if you are a Microsoft certified trainer as me, okay, we get this monthly uh, limit. Okay, uh, like we have a, there are different, different subscriptions even inside that. Okay, depending on what kind of, uh, whether you're a developer, whether you are an uh, administrator and etc. Okay. That also matters. So that basically determines whether you can use the Azure cloud platform or not. So without 
the subscription like i said any ott platform only free things you will get okay like for a certain period like 30 day trial or 40 day or whatever similar the same concept applies over here okay in azure you get if you are going for a free you get only 30 days of free services but not if all the services will be available to you okay then you would need to either shift to pay as you go meaning you pay the moment you any service that you want you pay immediately and you will be billed only for that okay or you go like my you purchase a subscription okay and you get that particular thing and you can use the azure platform correct so this is what is a subscription so this is what you require whenever you are deploying or creating any service on azure the second thing is called as a resource group now what is a resource group okay generally your applications okay might require uh, lots of um, different different uh, you know um things like a virtual machine or you might require a storage account you might require a database okay so let's say it's for one particular project that you are working on one particular website that you are creating or one particular application you are creating and you require all these things okay so instead of putting it across different different uh, folders let's say we put it as folders okay normally when we are working on a project what do we have a tendency of like i have a tendency you know to keep everything related to one thing inside one folder like now if i'm training on ai 900 okay i tend to keep all my demos all my presentations okay all my uh, videos or whatever material related to ai 900 in one folder right so that's what you also do if you're working on a project okay which requires this thing you which requires this thing so rather than scattering it across 10 different folders you put it into one folder so it's the same thing with your applications or your websites that you create okay let's say you want vms you want storage accounts you want um a uh, database okay rather than putting it dif at different locations or or not location i would say folders or containers okay you can group it into one and that group is called as a resource group so a resource group is like a logical container okay where you can put your as your resources whether it's a web app whether it's a virtual machine storage account database okay group it at one location or group it in one container right so that is what is that is what is a logical container so i am actually doing the basics because you are going to need it otherwise this is going to be an ai training uh, ai webinar only but when we do the demo i don't want people asking me what is a resource group what is this what is that so earlier only i had asked people whether they know or have the knowledge of this or not if you are not from that background you do need to know this without which you can't create services on azure so that is why i'm spending a little time on this okay so this is what is basically a resource group so let me know guys if you have any questions up till now this is what you need to know in terms of azure so if you have any questions here please let me know yes guys any questions okay so i take it as a no and let's proceed ahead so now we are going to start with module 1 okay so before we start with module 1 i would like to understand from your end what is your understanding of ai what do you what is your definition of ai if you can put it in the chat box it would 
very quickly. Let me know what is your understanding of AI? Uh, what is AI to you? Yes, guys. Okay, great. So that means majority of you all know what is AI and we all know that it has become very popular nowadays, right? It is very critical and AI is only and only going to grow. It has an immense future ahead, okay? With lots of companies, now since generative AI has come in, lots and lots of companies have got into this rat race of staying ahead in the game of AI, okay? So... In mod, so now we're going to start with module one. So module one basically is just going to talk about the fundamentals of AI. Like just do a quick overview of AI. What is AI? What are the different workloads? Okay, within AI. So before we start, let me just you know before we do come back to this presentation, I will just go back to the uh, notepad. Okay, I think it, I can explain it better through that. So you guys have given me absolutely perfect answers on what is artificial intelligence. Okay, so basically to put it in simple words, okay, artificial intelligence is something that is uh, used or it is, um, let's say, um, just one minute. So to put it simply, artificial intelligence, AI, is nothing but, a, let's say, a set of tools, okay? Sorry, set of tools that are used Okay, for two things. Okay, that are used for two things. One is for inferences. Okay, to infer, to get the, you know, insight to your data, to make out what is this data actually doing. Right? How am I? Uh, what can I? What can I infer from this data? Whether I'll get a loan or not. Where? What is the car price of the? of this model or whatever, okay? So if I have to do that, okay, I can infer the data and for that we use the AI tools. Now the second thing where we use AI is for predictions, right? We all know we use it for predictions, whether a person is diabetic or not, whether the person will get loan or not, right? Whether, what is the car price? This, these are the, this, this, okay, this is the size, this is the height and et cetera. This is the weight. Based on that, we then determine or predict the car price. So what is that? That is nothing but predictions. Now, if I want to find about these two things, how do I do it? AI basically says, okay, I am, I, I am a set of tools that will help you infer the data and make predictions out of that data. But how do I do it? How do I infer the data or how do I predict that a person will be, is diabetic or not? Okay, and since we know for the past two years, there's this COVID disease that came in, whether that person has COVID or not, how do we come to know? Okay, for that, we need to use something called as a AI models. Something called as the AI models. Now, what is AI models? So, AI models, to put it simply, okay, is a statistical representation 
real world process okay it is nothing but a statistical representation because i'll be honest like whenever you work with ai okay ai has statistics it has mathematics that you need to know okay it uses math and based on math itself okay it helps you find out infer the data and predict okay so ai models are nothing but that okay when you say you train a model when you say you deploy a model etc it is nothing but using the statistics behind it okay so for example let me just give you an example i think it will be more clear through that example let's say i am buying a new house okay i'll just open paint so let's say i'm buying a new house okay and i want to do a survey okay that okay let's say um this is the size of the house we all know we measure the size of the house in square meters right or square feet or whatever okay so i want to do a survey and determine okay for this the square feet or this is square meter what is the price and also in which city is that house in okay for example let's say i have information so what i'm going to do is i am going to take let me just increase the font size so let's say i have the information square feet okay and then i have the information about the city in which it is okay where the house is located and finally the i want to predict the price so based on this data i will infer okay what will be the price okay this is what i basically want to do let's say like because i want to buy a house i want to see i want to do a comparison okay based on the city based on the square feet what is the price okay so let's say i i have done a survey okay so 100 one second let me just increase the font size so let's say it's 100 kare So let's say it's hundred square feet, okay, and the city is Mumbai, okay. So the price is let's say one crore or one crore. I will say simply is one crore, okay. Now what I do, I take for another square feet, okay. Let's say two hundred. okay again the city is let's say mumbai okay and i find out that the price is 2 cr okay it is 2 cr now what have i done for 100 square feet mumbai i came to know it is 1 cr for 200 square feet mumbai again it is 2 cr now let's say i want to predict okay i want to predict what will be the price for 300 square feet again in mumbai what is going to be the price of that house how will i come to know so can you tell me what will be the price of the house if the square feet is 300 and the city is mumbai can you tell me can you predict the output for me can you estimate the price can you put it in the chat box guys yes absolutely right and how did you come to this conclusion that it is going to be not not this but it is going to be 3 crore or 3 cr how did you come to this conclusion what did you use
can I say that we used a simple mathematical formula? We used statistics to predict. Okay, if for hundred it was one CR, two hundred it was two CR. So for three hundred it will be three CR, right? So what was this? It was nothing but statistics. So this is nothing but a AI model. This is nothing but AI. Okay, so an AI is doing nothing else but just using statistics, using maths to predict or infer your data. So to put it simply, this is what basically artificial intelligence does. Clear? Now, when we come to artificial intelligence, okay. So this, I told you, okay, AI models, and there are multiple AI models. Okay, there is one big question that always comes to us. What is AI? What is ML? What is deep learning? And what is now this new thing that is Gen AI? What is this? What is the difference between the three? I mean, all, all of these terms that are there. What is what? How do we come to know? So let's understand the difference between these three. Okay. Between all these things. Okay. So I'll again switch to this. So when we say AI, okay, AI is basically the boss. Okay. It is something that we use, like we talked about right now. Okay. So this thing that you see, okay. This is nothing but AI. This is nothing but AI. So the bigger box is nothing but AI. Now you might be thinking, what is machine learning? Where does this come? So to put it simply, like if, even if you go online and you search, they say machine learning. <laughs> Is nothing but a subset of AI, which is true. Machine learning, again, the definition is the same as AI, but just it uses something like algorithms. Okay, the um, training and everything is a little different. Okay, but it is ultimately a AI. It is again a model or a workload of AI, and it is a part of AI. So this big circle that you see, I'll just change the color, put it to green, okay, is called as machine learning. This is ML. So machine learning is like, again, tools that you use to perform prediction and inference and all of that. So the ultimate goal is this only, but just it is a different way, okay, of uh, uh, using like different way in which you predict the outcome, okay. Then we have something called as deep learning, okay. So what is deep learning? I will be talking about it shortly, but just to give you an overview, okay, it is nothing but Something that uses the concept or how our brain functions, right? Exactly using that, it will uh, create models, train models, okay? The way our neural networks work, which is not a much, which is not available in machine learning. Machine learning is full of stats, okay? It uses full of statistics like sigmoid functions or our lines like y is equal to mx plus c, all those statistics come into machine learning, but that is not the same in deep learning. Deep learning uses the way our biological neural networks work, okay? But it uses the concepts of machine learning, of training, supervision, of classification, of regression, which we will be seeing, okay? So deep learning becomes a subset of machine learning. This is your deep learning. Okay, this is deep learning. Right. 
And now, finally, what is Gen AI then? So, like I said, the, so it's all, you know, basically, it's all a part of AI. Okay. You hear machine learning, you hear deep learning, you learn Gen AI, you hear, sorry, Gen AI. It is nothing but ultimately all require math statistics. Okay. In order to predict or infer data. That's the ultimate goal of artificial intelligence. Okay. So Gen AI now falls into the category. It is again a part over here which uses, again, different way of learning, training model, deploying and creating model. Okay, so that is what is Gen AI. So Gen AI, we know it has LLMs, it has a large language model for text, large image models for images, DALI, chat GPT for text, etc. So it is a part of, it is a subset of you can say deep learning, okay, but ultimately they are all part of AI, okay. So don't get confused when people say, okay, machine learning is nothing but this, deep learning is nothing but this. It is ultimately all artificial intelligence, okay. So when we talk about artificial intelligence, Artificial intelligence has multiple workloads. Okay, so we are going to talk about those workloads. The very first workload is machine learning itself. Okay, where, well, like I said, you use statistics, you use mathematics to train model, deploy models. Okay, then you have um ml um you can say um nlp natural language processing okay short form nlp just one minute yes one minute Then you have um, yeah, you have computer vision. What is computer vision? So you want to interpret uh, like I said, do you you want to do facial recognition, you want to interpret images, like you have three fruits let's say apple, banana, or orange, and you want to identify, okay? Which is, like, let's say I give another fruit image. So I want you to identify what a, what is the fruit, whether it's an apple or a banana or an orange. So for that, we need the computer vision. Then NLP is, of course, for speech, for, uh, you know, translation, interpreting sentiment analysis, understand, like when you're doing a review, you want to understand the uh, sentiment behind the review, whether it's positive, negative, etc. All that falls into NLP. Okay, so that is what is basically NLP. Then you have computer vision. You have the fourth workload is the document intelligence. So what is document intelligence? Uh, let's say we have these forms, right? We collect forms, documents. Okay, from that forms or documents, if I want to, uh, you know, analyze data, interpret data, or, you know, uh, process this data because the forms or the documents that are there, PDFs, or you talk about uh, the Microsoft forms or Google forms and et cetera. And from that, I want to, you know, understand or, you know, you've done some survey or something and you want to find out the result. Okay. So you, those data are generally unstructured in nature. So you need to 
if you want to make predictions or you want to infer that data, you need some other capabilities of AI and that is nothing but document intelligence. Clear? Then you have knowledge mining. Now, now what is knowledge mining? So we all have, we go to these different websites, right? And on the websites we have on the right hand side, a box popping up and asking you, how can I help you and etc. We've seen right on these different websites. So what is that? That is nothing but a chat box, right? A chat box, sorry, that comes and it asks you some basic questions. So those questions that it has to, uh, you know, you, you say, okay, hi, it says, hi, how can I help you? So you type in the your requirement and then based on the questions you have feed already into it, it will try to answer the question that you have asked. So let's say you are a travel agency, okay? And somebody's come, to your website and it asks ask this chat box that, okay, please tell me, I want to book flights to New York. I want to book flights to this place. So what it will do, it will say, okay, let it will search in its Q&A that you have feed into it and it will come up with an answer. So that workload or that capability of AI is called as knowledge mining. Okay, so you kind of create a knowledge so like a knowledgeable store which you can search okay you can go and search from it like whether it's a bot or anything you ask it you ask questions okay that you have already fed into it and it will give you an answer so you're basically like searching for you're trying to find out the answer you're trying to extract information from there okay so that is what is called as knowledge mining so this is one capability. So these workloads basically are nothing but capabilities of AI, okay, that help you create these models or train a model and etc. So they they are kind of segregated. Whether machine learning you want to do, you want to do, you want to work with images, you want to work with spoken language, or you want to work with translation, etc. You want to analyze PDFs. Okay, you want to extract information from those PDFs, etc. You want to do, uh, you want AI to generate something of its own, original content of its own. Like, let's say you have read a book and you want a summary of that book. So it's something that nobody, you cannot find. You need to sit and you need to find, write that summary down, right? You Once you have read that book. Let's say you don't want to do that. You want AI to generate that content for you, like uh, email or like a resignation letter or etc. So that capability of AI we all know is called as generative AI, right? It uses all of, uh, it creates its own content, okay, original content, right? It will go with whatever it is being trained on from whichever sites it has been, you know, it picks up it all uses that and generates its own answer, right? How we use the chat GPT, exactly the same thing, okay? That is what is generative AI, okay? So these are the workloads that you basically deal with when you are working on AI. And this is what we are going to study in today's training. So module one is all about that. And module two, then we shift to machine learning. Just before we talk about machine learning, okay, now we all know AI has a lot of power. Okay, I told you it is going to slowly take over the world. Okay, people have already started talking about that. Things are being replaced. Okay, humans are being replaced by machines, sorry. But yeah, that is the situation, right? It is happening. People are relying more and more on chat GPT and etc. to, you know, help that help them in their work right but along with this we all know with there's a very famous line line we all know with great power comes great comes responsibility great responsibility right so if you have to use ai you have to be very responsible for it okay that is called as responsible ai now what is responsible ai Okay, so when we say that uh, 
AI model or AI, um, whenever you're working with AI, you have to be very careful. Okay, you have to be, you have to be very ethical when you are working with AI, right? And there are certain principles that you need to follow. Okay, when you are in, when you're dealing with artificial intelligence, the very first principle is called as fairness. So what do I mean by fairness? So let's say I have developed a model. Okay, let's say a machine learning model, which predicts whether a person gets loan or not. Okay, whether that person will get a loan or not. So let's say for males, it says, okay, they will get a loan. If it's a male candidate, okay, it's a man who is a, who wants to get a loan. So the model says, okay, you will get a loan. But but when it's a female, the model says you will not get a loan. So it is not being what it is not being fair for just because she is a female, you are denying her a loan. Okay, so it's not being fair, right? It is kind of do it is predicting based on the gender, which is not fair, which is ultimately be becoming biased, right? It is becoming biased towards the male candidate and not for the female candidate, okay? There is a gender bias that is taking place. So that is what is basically not fair, right? It is not fair. So it's not adhering to this principle. So first principle of, of a responsible AI model is the fairness. You can't discriminate between a male and a female when it is coming to loan. You have to think, you have to see other features as well. Okay, what is the salary of that person, etc. Is there a history of loans or etc. All of that has to be considered and then only you can give or predict whether you get a loan or not. So that is what is called as fairness. Okay, without uh, predicting outcome without any bias. Okay, predicting outcome or output without any bias. Okay, yeah. so the sec this is the first principle. The second principle is reliability and safety. So what does reliability and safety means, right? So let's say I have developed a model, okay, which diagnoses a patient based on the symptoms, okay, and um, yeah, based on the symptoms you're doing the diagnosis, whether that patient is going to be um, a, a diabetic patient or not, right? So in these situations. Okay, you cannot let the AI, okay, you cannot, you know, um, how do I put it? Um, you can't release this patient's personal data because, see, when you're talking about health, you're talking about uh, a person's life, right? So you have to be responsible enough, okay, because the patient is trusting you. So that you don't share this data with the rest of the world, keep it safe and keep it secure, right? That is, and you can't just release it to anyone that you need. So you need to have a mutual consent. You need to have reliability. Okay, that is what is the second principle of being a responsible AI. Okay, so you can't have your system. Okay, uh, sharing this data not keeping it, which leads us to the third principle, privacy and security. So there is, if you don't keep it private or something, how will the patient, you know, think that it is reliable and share the complete information that is required in order to predict the outcome or infer the data, right? That is why we need Yes, you, you're right, you need standards, but you need to, in order to keep it, you know, you have to be responsible, you need to keep it secure, you need to keep it private, right? You can't have the system releasing data to anyone. 
right? You can't do that. So you have to keep your data, the model in such a way you have to train it that you do not, uh, you do not um, uh, damage the image of that person or that data that is being collected. Okay. Then the fourth principle is inclusiveness. Now, what do you mean by inclusiveness? So let's say you have developed an AI model, okay? And uh, that AI model is basically doing a translation, okay? Whichever language you put in, it is doing a translation, okay? And what you are doing, it's just translating. It's doing a text translation. You've typed in and it's just doing a text translation. So do you think this particular text that you are typing Will can be visible to someone who does not have or is visually impaired. Okay, is a blind person can't read or anything. Do you think it is fair for them? Do you think you have engaged, you have thought about that person while you developed this AI model? No, right. So where is the concept of inclusive inclusiveness coming in? Where you have decided, where you haven't considered the entire society. Okay, regardless of the gender, regardless of the, uh, I mean, uh, physical, uh, uh, physical factor, the physical ab uh, ability, okay, physical defects that they have, without considering that, okay, you have just created an AI model. So it is, you know, uh, against the inclusiveness principle of a responsible AI. Clear? So that is what is called as inclusiveness. You're not including that person. You're not including everyone, okay, as a whole. So that is something that is irresponsible, right? So that is inclusiveness. Then the fifth principle is transparent transparency. So what is transparency? Like AI, like whenever you have a user, the user has to be fully aware of what he is working on, what is its limitation, okay? What is the AI model capable of doing? Okay, you have to be very careful and be very transparent in these aspects. Okay, this data is going to be required. You need to give it, you have to be clear, tell the patient, tell the person, okay? You have to be transparent in order to, you know, uh, whenever you're creating an AI, model. So the fifth principle of a responsible AI is being transparent. You need to tell the user how it works, what are its limitations and etc. Okay. And the sixth and the final responsible AI principle is accountability. Now ac accountability we all know because we have personal data coming into picture, right? Our data is very, very critical. Okay, like chat GPT, I think they open AI, I think has a lawsuit going on them. Like, you know, people, they are kind of using our data. Who is going to be accountable? We are accountable or they are accountable. You can't just uh, plagiarize anyone's data, right? You have to be accountable for it. Okay, you have to be ethical, follow the legal standards, see whether those regulations are being maintained or not. Okay, all of those considerations are nothing but accountability. Who is accountable for this? What if the AI model fails and it has by mistake really leaked critical data? Who is accountable for that? Who is going to do, who is going to take, look after that? Okay, so that is basically what is accountability. So this is the principles, so I'll just put it here, of responsible AI. So if you want to create a AI model, these are the six principles that you need to look after, need to work on before you make your AI models available to the public. Okay, so let's just jump back to the presentation. And let's quickly walk through the presentation. Okay, so it has everything that I just talked about right now.
Okay, so this is what is basically uh, that we did. We, we did uh, fundamental concepts of AI, where I talked about what is AI, okay, uh, what is it used for, and etc. We talked about the different workloads, okay. This is the workloads that we just talked about, which is a part of AI. OK, it's just different names that have been given. So if you're working on machine learning using statistics, if you're working on images, videos, what is the AI work equivalent AI workload, etc. That's what we just talked about. Then we just talked about uh, principles of. This uh, the presentation, I'm sorry, we can't share. We are not allowed, but I will be sharing the equivalent link of this presentation like i said okay we i will be definitely sharing we are not allowed it's a microsoft policy uh we uh, we are not allowed to do that okay so this is what is basically the six principles okay of um responsible ai okay all of those things we are talking about over so before we move into this thing we are now going to look at the fundamentals of machine learning, one of the yeah, one of the workloads of Azure AI. Okay. Um okay, so we'll just do this. I'll just explain the concept to you all. And once we complete the concept, we'll take a break. Okay. And after the break, we will uh, do the demo that I want to show you all. Okay. So with this, we will end with module one. OK, so let me just switch back to the concept. I'll open the notepad again. Coming to the first workload. Like I said, it, we are just going to talk about these workloads only. OK, this is what is basically the fundamentals of AI. OK, so. Um, yeah, that is it. So what is machine learning? OK, to put it simply, if you're using statistics, OK, mathematics in order to predict or infer the data, OK, that is nothing but machine learning. Machine learning, like I said, is nothing but a subset of artificial intelligence. OK, you are using stat tools, you're using algorithms, you're using maths in order to predict the outcome that is called as machine learning. Now, machine learning is of two types. Actually, three, but we are not going to cover the third type. I'm just going to stick to um, the full agenda I had talked about in the beginning of the session itself. So I don't think so. I'm going to repeat it again and we will you I will lose five minutes on that. OK, so coming to the types of machine learning. So basically, agenda is nothing. I'm just going to talk about these workloads only. Okay, show some demos, and uh, that's it. So it's going to be the fundamentals of AI 900. So it's just covering uh, or doing an overview of these models. That's the only agenda of this session. Okay. Now coming to types of machine learning. So ML, I'll just say. The first is called as a supervised ML. OK, so what is supervised machine learning? So we all have gone to school, right? Schools, colleges, we have all been there, right? And whenever we are doing any subject, we are studying about a subject, whether it's history, geography, math, etc., right? So we have a teacher who guides us, who tells us, who informs us, OK, this is what happened. This is how it will happen. This is what you're supposed to do, and etc., etc. So we have a teacher who is helping us learn, right? She is there to guide us, to teach us, okay? So that kind of, if you, let's say, want to put it into a model, okay? Let's say you want to predict the data, or you want to predict whether a person will get a loan or not. You want to predict what is what will be the price of the car, okay? So. If you want to create a model around that, okay, based on what your teacher has taught you, okay, that is called as a supervised learn, supervised machine learning. Okay. 
So supervised machine learning is nothing but where you have something called as features. Features meaning like when you are talking about loan, okay, where you want to predict whether a person will get loan or not, or let's say you want to predict whether what is the price of the this thing of the car. Okay, so what are the features? You will take the company name first of all. You will take the uh, weight of the car. You will take the mileage. How much is it giving you mileage? Right, horsepower, etc. I I don't know the technical terms much, but you talk about the height of the car, the weight of the car. Okay, you talk about the mileage, horsepower, etc. And then based on that. What you do, you predict, or we call that as target slash label. Okay, in terms of machine learning, okay, you get you predict. Right? What do you predict? You predict the car price based on what? Based on these features. So this kind of a machine learning where you have features and you have a target. OK, they like let's say car price. You have these, these, these features, these, this, this data. And based on that, you have a output already given to you. OK, output already given to you. And that output is called as a label or a target column. OK, in machine learning, that kind of uh, machine learning is called as a supervised ML. So what does the model do based on whatever data you have provided? OK, it takes the label. It takes the target of the previous data and it will try and predict. So what will it have? It will have the actual value and it will have the predicted value and it will compare. And based on the comparison, there is lots of um, uh, performance parameters. OK, which I will talk about. I'll, show it, I, I'll just show it to you all in a presentation. OK, so when you have to when you have this supervised machine learning, Supervised machine learning again has two types. Uh, I'd rather do one thing. I'll show it through this. It will be easier to draw. So let's say this is your ML machine learning. OK. Now machine learning, like I said, has two types. Supervised. And you have. Unsupervised. Okay. This a little bit here. Yeah. Now, supervised is divided again into two. To put it simply, supervised is where you have a label column. Okay. You know what will be the output. OK, you have a label. Slash target or we also call it as the actual value. OK, you already have this present and based on that you are kind of predicting. OK, so again, like I said, it is divided into two. One is the regression more regression type. And the other. is called as classification. OK, so you have two types. Regression and the other. Is the classification. Supervised machine learning. Now, what is regression? What is classification? So, the example that I gave you about the car price, where you are predicting a car price, and car price is generally what? It is going to be numeric in nature. 
right? The output is going to be numeric, right? It's going to have some different values for different card uh, features, right? It's not going to be the same. It is going to um, it's going to be different. Right, it's going to be uh, every our uh, numeric value is going to be different. I'm going to show you all the demos. You don't have to do anything over here. It's just a webinar, so you will not be doing anything. You will be seeing, of course, through the demos. So first, I will have to complete the theory. Right, I can't jump directly to the demo. So you will be definitely seeing how it does all of this. Okay. So regression is basically where you are getting a continuous output the data is going to be continuous right it is going to be continuous the output is going to change every time depending on the features and you get numeric output okay works on numeric data that is what is called as a regression supervised machine learning model and this particular thing has various uh, algorithms that it uses, statistics that it uses. OK, the algorithms, I'll just write it down over here. algorithms that are used. So basically, it's like a linear uh, this thing. So like I said, it uses all those slope concepts and all of that. So I'm not going to go in depth of that. OK, we don't have time also for it. So you have the linear regression. Basically, it uses the concept of y is equal to mx plus c. OK, you have polynomial regression or you have multiple slopes. That's the only thing. So these are the two algorithms that it uses. OK, so this is what is basically a regression model. OK, where you have continuous output. It is not uh, it is numeric. OK, it's going to increase or change or decrease. OK, it's going to be continuous in nature. OK, so that is what is the regression supervised machine learning. Then you have classification. So classification here you have definite or categorical output. OK, meaning I told you all uh, about the loan, whether a person will get a loan or not. It is either yes or no success or failure. OK, so this is called as binary classification where there are only two outcomes. At times there can be multi class classifications or categories. Right. If you want to classify whether this is a banana, apple, orange, whether this is a cat, dog, or a horse, okay, you have multi class, multi multiple options to classify, right? So as the name says, classification, okay. So that is what is basically classification. Here you have you get categorical data, okay. You work on categorical data basically, okay. And the algorithms that it uses. It uses something called as logistic regression. Don't get confused. It is not a part of uh, the regression. It is in uh, classification only logistic regression. You have uh, decision tree. You have a uh, random forest. So these are some of the algorithms that it uses. OK, now coming. So here you have features and labels. Like I said, you have the target value. You know what is going to be the outcome and uh, you can do comparison. OK, these have different performance parameters. OK, if you want to evaluate a model, we kind of use performance parameters. OK, so regression 
has different performance parameters. So I'll just write it down over here. You, it uses the absolute mean. It uses the root mean square R RMSC. And it uses something called as one second. Coefficient. Oh, it's actually called e square. I forgot coefficient. Oops. So sorry. <laughs> Just forgot the name. Yeah, coefficient of determination. Yeah, my bad. It's also called R square, not E. My bad again over there. Okay, coefficient of determination, RM root mean square error, RMSE, absolute mean. You have mean, yeah, absolute error actually, not mean. So I'll just change that also. Abs mean absolute error, MAE. So these are some of the performance evaluating uh, parameters that are used, or you can also call it as uh, evaluation metrics. Okay. For classification, you have different parameters or metrics. It has metrics over here. You have uh, precision. You have accuracy. You have uh, something called as RO, ROC curve or AUC area under the curve. Okay, ROC, AUC. You also have confusion matrix where you have the false negative and all of that. Okay, so these are some of the evaluation matrix that you can use. Okay. Confusion matrix, all of those are there for, for, for evaluating a classification model. So all of this use, uh, you know, yeah. Another thing you there is recall, which is important. Recall F one score that is also there. Okay, so lots of parameters for all or lots of matrix. Sorry, lots of met matrix here. Yeah. To predict, to evaluate the model. So this is the supervised. Coming to unsupervised, here you don't have a label, just features, only features. Okay, in the data, there is no outcome, nothing predicted, no actual value, nothing, no target column. Okay, for uh, supervised machine learning. Okay, so it has. It kind of you know determines data based on the population where there is maximum density of the uh, data. Okay, based on that, it kind of learns because it is unsupervised. Okay, it has no outcome. It doesn't know what to do. Okay, so that is what is basically the unsupervised machine learning. There is no fee, there is no label, no target it has to achieve. Okay, which goes unsupervised. There's nobody to guide that person. Okay, so there is only one type in this that is called as clustering. Okay, so clustering is the only this thing over here. So clustering, there is only it uses like for example, if I want to uh predict the petals of a flower okay i want to find out the petals and the leaves analyze based on that what kind of a uh, plant it is or what kind of a spe species it is okay uh, what kind of a flower it is that kind of example falls into the clustering 
okay so clustering like i said it kind of creates clusters creates groups okay and it um, uh, gives you the output predicts the outcome okay so here the there are lots of algorithms you have k means clustering you have pca okay lots of algorithms again over here in order to use k means is i think the most popular so yeah k algorithms So K means, okay. Yeah, so this is what is basically the basic of uh, machine learning. Okay, there are steps in which to perform these machine learning uh, that are there. So real world use case, like I said, you have a flower species. Okay, you want to determine, let's, uh, you want to determine a flower species based on the petals based on the leaves that it has, okay, that you can use, okay, in order to, uh, you know, when if you're a botanist or something, okay, or a zoologist or whatever, you can use it to predict, okay, what kind of a flower it is, because you have no, let's say, label for it. You don't have any sample flowers that you have done, which is similar to regression or classification, okay? So then you can use, clustering or if you want you have a big population and on the population you want to find out something you know, what does the population uh, tend to do you know there is no output it can vary there is no label for that okay when you are doing some survey or something right so so for that you can use the clustering unsupervised machine learning model okay so on azure okay if you are performing machine learning I'll just write in short form over here. So when you are working with machine learning on Azure, okay, you have to, the service called as Azure Machine Learning Studio, okay, which helps you train models, create models, okay, and sorry, lots of steps that you need to follow which we are going to see after we take a quick break. Okay, so this is what we are going to work on. Okay, so let's take a 20 minute break. Okay, and we will come back and we will, I'll show you how to create a simple regression model using the Azure Machine Learning Studio. Okay, so I'll just start the timer. So see you after 20 minutes.
Hello, everyone. I hope you all are back. Please put a yes if you all are back. Yes, you're going to get the badge, but it's not now, probably after the lunch break or something. So my colleague Archie will make the announcement for that. Okay, so before we get into the demo, let's just look at the presentation. Let's walk through the presentation quickly. So we saw the fundamentals of machine learning. Okay. So this is what basically are the steps. So you first train the data. So you have your training data, past observations, like I said, features and label. Okay. Then you apply some algorithms on top of that. Okay. And you create a model out of that. So algorithms is basically statistics, maths. Okay. There are some formulas, functions that are applied. Okay. Like I told you in regression. Generally, we use the common uh, linear line that is the slope of the line. That is y is equal to mx plus c. We use that concept. OK, so we don't have to look at the statistics. It's just for information that I am telling. And whatever the function captures, we kind of create a model out of that. And once we have a model, we pass some other data which does not have a label which has features, okay? And based on that features, it has to predict the label, okay? So that we call it as a predict predicted output, okay? And compare it with the labels that we already have in our training data. And based on that, we make our predictions or we infer it, okay? We call it also as an inferred label, okay? So this is the process in which machine learning generally takes place, okay? Then we talked about the types of machine learning. So this is what it is. OK, uh, these are the types of machine learning, supervised, unsupervised. Then model training, like I said, the same steps. So you basically split the data that you have in, a, in something that we call as training data and testing data or validation data. So what do we do first? We use, so what, let's say we have 100% of the data. So what do we do? We, do, we take the 70% of the data uh, as training data and apply our algorithm on top of that data, okay? And pre, uh, kind of evaluate that model, okay? Uh, once and kind of do the predictions and et cetera. And once we get the output, we evaluate based on what model you have created, okay? Whether it's a regression or a classification or a clustering, okay? Once that is done, we take the testing data. So as the name says, validation or testing, we test the data on, uh, on the model to see whether we are actually getting the, whether our actual value and the predicted value is matching or not. Okay, if there is a lot of variation, okay, that means our model is performing, the performance of our model is poor, okay, based on the evaluation that we do. Okay, it's going to be poor, so we have to change the model replace it, do some hyperparameter tuning, all of that. So that is a lot of in-depth, okay? So in case, you know, in the future, you want to do machine learning, study machine learning, okay? Um, there is a course dedicated for it. Uh, Microsoft has a certification dedicated for it called as DP100, okay? So whenever you are doing machine learning, it is also called as data science, okay? So you are like a data scientist, OK, so you can go for that uh, certification. It is called as DP100. So we also do trainings on that, OK, in case in the future you want to do. Then another aspect of, of uh, like I told you, of AI is deep learning, OK? So what is basically deep learning, OK? Um, Sorry, uh, we can't. I'll do that in the end. Let me finish my 
training guys uh, my webinar then i will be talking about all the reference links and etc don't worry i will be uh, sharing that with you all so now coming to deep learning so machine learning i told you basically focuses on statistics uses maths okay but that is not enough okay we need we have features um uh when you have data that you categorize or you have numeric data okay at times there can be situations where you want you know to where your where the way your brain works you want it to work, your model to work the same way now what do i mean by that let's say um i have an image okay and to that image i want uh, i i want to see whether it's a banana whether it's a uh, apple or it's a orange i want to predict that so normally our brain is trained for it right from childhood we have been trained right okay this is a banana this is a apple like red color is apple orange color is orange a yellow color is banana and banana is more cylindrical in shape like you know elongated cylindrical so we have been trained so our brain gets used to it right by looking at it uh, initially we will make some mistakes but as in when we look at more uh, and more bananas more and more apples more and more oranges right we our brain gets trained okay so that same concept if i pick up and i put it to a model the same way our human brain works okay we all know the biological neural network we have something called as neurons which receive signals which receive some electrochemical activity okay this is that is how our thoughts this is how we that is how we think right now uh, whenever we get a signal and since all the uh, neurons are connected in our brain right we can process that information pass it to one neuron to the next neuron and so and so forth right so this is what basically is adapted in deep learning so deep learning is more like and like i said it's a subset of machine learning okay where it is more rugged where um uh you are actually using the way the brain learns okay whereas in machine learning what you are doing you are using maths it is some formula it is being described it is already being defined right here you are that is not the way it will work right if you want to uh uh use the way our brain or learn the way our brain learns in a model that is called as deep learning so it is like i said a subset of machine learning it's just the architecture is a little different it resembles the way a biological neural network is so uh, the network or the architecture that is created is called as the artificial neural network or the ann short form is ann so i will just give me one minute okay i'll just write it down here so deep learning is basically divided into three okay one is your basic architecture which is the anl artificial neural network the second architecture okay that comes into picture when you when i say i'm talking about the images okay it is called as a convolutional neural network or the cnn over as the C convolutional neural network which we will see in the next module when we touch upon uh, computer vision which i told you is one aspect is one of the workloads of artificial intelligence which which talks about uh, images videos okay helps you in facial recognition and all of that okay identifying the helps you in identifying uh, the various uh, images that are there so that is what is convolutional neural network so it is a so the architecture and the working remains the same it's just um, the depending on the data that you have it varies that's the only 
difference that is there. Okay. Uh, then, then we have RNN, okay, which we don't need to know. There is RNN also, but I'm not going to cover that. So we don't. We are not going to talk much about this. Okay, so it's basically related to text and time series data and all of that. So we uh, we're not going to focus much on this, but we are going to focus on ANN and CNN. Okay, so before we go in much depth, before I show the demo, let me just explain how the deep learning architecture works. Okay, let's just talk about that. Okay, so I'll just share my screen. Okay, so I told you that a deep learning architecture. So, you know how our brain works, right? We are trained over the years to, you know, understand through images, through our eyes and everything we have been told. Okay, this is an apple, this is a banana, this is a, or this is a square, this is a rectangle, this is a circle, etc. Right? So the same thing we use in our artificial or deep learning architecture. Okay. Or this as deep learning. I'll just put it like this. Okay. So let's say I want to figure out, I want to differentiate. Let's say uh, I have given an image or I've given it uh, some uh, text or whatever. Okay, it can be used in that context also, but uh, there is some difference. Okay, so let's say I've given it an image where I want to find out where one image is a rectangle. Okay, the other is a circle. And the other is a triangle okay let's say we have these three images okay and normally our human brain what do we do we we uh, kind of uh, how do we identify okay this is a rectangle this is a square this is a, a triangle okay something that has four lines which is joined we kind of i'm just giving a simple meaning we kind of make out okay this can be a square or this can be a rhombus parallelogram rectangle etc but something that doesn't have, which has curves, which is uh, a little bit, which doesn't have definite lines, okay, that is a circle. And something that has three sides is a triangle. So this is how we have been told, right, from our school days. And that is how we kind of um, find out, okay, this is a rectangle, this is a circle, this is a triangle. But if I have to do the same thing on a model, how do I do that? Okay, so let's say I have passed a circle. Okay, the image that I have passed is a circle. Okay, and normally when you pass a circle, okay, let's say this is an image. Okay, we are taking the concept of an image. So we all know that a uh, image. Okay, so when an, when we capture an image, we all know that image uh, is something that is made up of pixels, right? We all know pixels, right? It is uh, captured into grids. It is divided. It, every grid has a, some pixel value, like uh, 0 or 255 or something. Okay, grayscale and all those concepts comes into picture. So when you capture, uh, when you say you pass a circle image, okay? The length of or the pixel size generally that is taken, okay, this is the standard size, is 28 by 28. Okay, it is 28 by 28, which is uh, which is later multiplied, okay, which is equal to, so it will be like 28 multiplied by 28, so which is nothing but the square, and it is coming around. 784 pixels. Okay, it is it will come to 784 pixels. So when I pass this image, 
okay now i told you our brain okay is made up of neurons correct it is made up of neurons so neuron is something that you know uh, gets the signals and based on that it performs the task right so similar to our brain architecture okay there is there are layers okay inside the deep learning neural network okay so the first layer okay now uh, i told you neurons are the one that accept the stimulus uh, signal okay so there are multiple layers that are created in the neural architecture the very first layer okay it will have multiple neurons which will look something like this let me just copy okay and multiple more okay so i'll just draw it here so this first layer that you see okay this first layer that you see of neurons okay it is ultimately made of neurons only this is called as the input layer so like I, how we have our eyes which is the first this which is the first layer which takes in okay this is a square or this is a circle or this is a triangle right the eyes what they do they communicate to the neurons so this the neurons in the eyes will take it to your brain so that is the very first layer right so it's the same thing over here so these pixels these 784 pixels will be divided okay across these neurons and it will be fed over here so you will be passing these features that we call so let's say this is the first pixel this is what it will have okay you will pass the first pixel so it is called as x1 let's say then you will pass the second to the second neuron so this will be called as x2 okay then you pass the third and this is called as x3 and then it will follow below okay so this is how it is intercepted it is taken okay then once you get the input okay the next layer that is there let me just reduce the size Because we have many more of this thing to come. Okay, we'll pass to another layer called as the hidden layer. Okay, so this hidden layer can have multiple layers of neurons. We don't know. Okay, that you have to figure out that you depends on the data and the training that you give to it. Okay, so at this level, you don't need to know about it. Okay, so it again has neurons to it. Okay, and this is full of neurons, guys. And these neurons are nothing but something that have functions associated to it. Okay, they are nothing but functions. So again, I'll just. Okay, so now when you get the input, okay, you have passed the feature to each one of those neurons in the first layer. Okay, next what is done is that every neuron, okay, will be connected to the neurons 
just actually use a line to connect. So every feature, okay, or this neuron is connected to the other, to every neuron, okay. I'll just show it for one, you, uh, because it will be very confusing. I'll show the ultimate diagram later, okay. We have it in the presentation. So something like this, it will look like. Okay, so it will get connected to the neurons, to each neuron. So one neuron gets connected to all the neurons. Of course, there is more below. I'll just do it over here. Okay, it will get connected like this to all the neurons. So the way in which it gets connected, these lines, okay, they are called as weighted channels. They are called as weighted channels. Why weighted? Because every channel will carry some weight on it. Okay, it will carry some weight on top of this. So it will be something like a 0 0.8 or 0 0.6. This will have... 0.7 or whatever value, okay, 0.2. This will have, let's say, 0.5. Okay, so every channel will have a weight. So since I told you these are pixels, so pixel will have some value like 0 or 255. Okay, along with that, you will pass that value to this neuron, okay? Then what it will do, it will multiply with these weighted values that are there, okay? And these values, actually, you have to determine it's something that uh, is in your hand, okay? And trust me, like when you are training a model, which is like this, which is deep learning, it takes months, years, I mean, chat GPT or uh, open AI came after the uh, the concept is going to be deep learning only over there. It, it took so many years for it to train that model. So you can understand so many permutation combinations you need to do over here. Okay, so it's ultimately, a, there is no fixed size or something. It is up to how you train. Like I said, you need to go into the statistics of that. So, which is not a part of this, but just to explain, because this is the base of all the modules that we are going to see, whether it's computer vision or whatever that we are going to see ahead. Okay, this is the base. That is why I'm spending some time on it. Okay. So, <laughs> so what ultimately happens here, you multiply the pixel and these weighted channel. Okay. And along with that, there is something called as a, bias that goes on the next layer of the uh, of after the input layer so this layer that you see is there a square box or a dotted box okay now So this will have multiple layers. Fine, I can't draw this here. I'll just quickly draw circles. So 
Okay, so this is the hidden layer. We don't know how many layers will be there. Okay, so this is your hidden layer. And they are again full of neurons because it's a neural network, so it's always going to be full of neurons. Okay, and within the hidden layer, you have these biases. So what are these biases? Basically, it's like a neuron having some unique value associated with it. So again, this value, it is something that you do, okay, that you decide. Okay, so ultimately what happens, you multiply the pixel value with these weighted channels and then you add these bias values to this. So it will look something like this. So it's again, like I told you, it's basically a function that is working in the background. So it will be like, let's say you're taking pixel one. So I'll just increase the font size. So it'll be like X1 multiplied by what is 0 0.6. Plus X2, let's say we are taking X2. Okay, I've not written for X2. Let's just take some random value. It's again on the weighted channel. Okay, so let's say 0 0.5. Okay, and this total will then be added to bias 1 because even X2 will be connected to B1. X3 will be connected to B1. Here it is going to get a little complicated. That is why I've not added it but it is how it will look okay i'll show you the ultimate diagram and then it is added to b1 so this total function this function that gets created is called as an activation function this is called as an activation function okay so this activation function so it will it is nothing but the sum of all uh like it's like yeah sum of the pixel with the weighted channel and the bias so whichever neuron okay what happens is whichever whatever is the output of this activation function okay uh, that particular neuron then gets activated and then based on that, okay, it gives it again, it gives the output, okay. So it will say, okay, this is the neuron that was activated, okay. And uh, so based on that, then it will give you, it will pass the information to the next layer, okay. Then, like I said, in the hidden layer, there are multiple layers, okay. So it will pass it to that layer okay till the time so it will keep on passing you know those stimuluses will be passed so you got it from the input comes to the first layer of the hidden layer pass it to the next layer within the hidden layer similarly like that it will be passed okay similar diagram will be created and till the time it reaches the second last layer that is your output layer so whichever neuron is activated it will correspond and try and compare to the input layer and based on that, it will determine the image that is there. Okay, so they are con so this is how your deep learning architecture or your artificial neural network works. Okay, so this is your hidden layer. You will have the output layer, which will then because you have trained your model. Okay, because you have trained your model. So this is your output layer. Okay. You will have your rectangle. You will have your circle. So it's like similar to your machine learning where you have already trained, uh, you have output, predicted output, you already know, okay, that either of these three images will come. Okay, it's like supervised. Okay, it is already supervised. Okay, and then you have the triangle. So whichever second last layer neuron gets activated, it will try and correspond it to the input layer. And in the output,
input layer, it will then activate that part. So this is called as the output layer. So here, if it gets a signal, if the function corresponds to the circle, so the circle will be activated. So I'll just change the color. Okay, so it will be activated. Okay, that can be errors. There can be problems. Like it's not going to be one hundred percent. Okay, so based on whatever is the weighted channel and the bias. So this is the bias B. Based on that, based on what values you add, based on the, uh, based on what it receives, the neurons receive that particular image will be activated. And that is how it determines whether this is a circle, whether this is a rectangle, or whether this is a triangle. Okay, so this is how it uses, or this is how the deep learning or the artificial neural network works. Okay, so it can be applied to images, and we have CNN, which we will see in the next module. Okay, so I'll just go back to the presentation. Okay, so this is your deep learning. So this is how it works. If you see, so this is for a penguin that is there. So this is your hidden layer. This becomes your hidden layer. This is your hidden layer. This is your input layer where you pass the features. And this is your output layer. Okay, and then based on whatever is activated, okay, it sees, okay, this is activated, this has the highest weightage. So it will, you know, select this and pass it. So if you see, it is a 100% match. Okay, so this is like a multi class classification. Like I told you, deep learning is nothing but a, uh, just a subset of machine learning. Correct. So that is what basically we are doing here. You will have, yeah, you can train and keep. So training, you know, because these weights that are there, weighted uh, weighted channels, biases, they can. Uh, can you see my penguin screen? Like, can you see penguins on the screen, guys? Can you see penguins? So I think you have to check your internet. Okay, so this is for how your deep learning module, more uh, deep learning works. Okay, this is how it will. Um, this is how it is used. Now coming to Azure machine learning. So Azure machine learning basically it's like a uh, path service. Okay, it is a platform as a service where you don't have to worry about like as I explained in the beginning here. Uh, there are three ways in which you can deploy models or create models or train models. One is using the machine learning studio that is through pipelines. It is like a uh, drag and drop uh, options you get. The second is using the Python SDK. OK, so if you are if you're not from the coding background, uh, especially Python, I would recommend people to you learn Python for machine learning and AI, it is it is very, very beneficial to it will always enhance your knowledge. So learn Python if you don't know. OK, but in case you don't know, that is also not a challenge. OK, we have services for that, but knowing Python is an add on definitely. So now what we're going to do is we are going to see a small demo how to train a model using the machine learning studio where I'm going to create a pipeline. OK, yeah, I was talking about the types that are there. So one is the studio. So this is your studio. The other is your SDK, Python SDK or the notebook feature. It is it has the notebooks. 
it uses Python language. So the libraries that are there, SkyKit, Learn, Skipi, all those libraries come into picture. Okay. And the third one is called as automated ML. Okay, let's say you don't want to even create pipelines, not write a code, no worries. Uh, Microsoft has got that covered for you. Okay, all you have to do is just put in your data, select, uh, it will automatically train, use the algorithms, train the model. And out of that, you can select the best model that is there based on the uh, evaluation metrics. Okay, all you have to do is put in your data. That's it. Okay. So this is what basically machine learning does on Azure. Okay, so let's just see a quick demo. I'll just show it to you all very quickly. Okay. So that let me just log into my. So in case you're not from the um, AI or background, like, so if you're not from a development perspective i think learning python would be a good starting point uh, in case you are um, looking for coming into ai so learning python language then and how to work with python machine learning that would be an added advantage okay um, because uh, or you some programming language you should know uh, is what I would recommend because if you want to learn, you want to write your own models or something for that, I think uh, learning your language is going to be 200% uh, beneficial. I'm just logging into my uh, portal. Just give me a minute. Yeah. Okay, so I am sharing my screen. We are going to see how to create a Azure Machine Learning Studio from scratch. I've already, I don't have one created, but I'll show it to you all. I have already searched for Azure Machine Learning. Okay, so this is my subscription. If you see, it is giving, I get a monthly credit. Okay, I already have one created. I'm going to create one more ML. So I'm going to go for a new workspace. Okay, so whenever you create a uh, Azure mach uh, machine learning uh, this thing, there are four things that get created. One is the workspace. The other is a storage account. Then uh, you get a container registry. No, one second. Yeah, container registry, which you don't need to know. And the other thing that gets created is a key vault. Okay, so if I show it to you all over here, if I come over here, should show me. Yeah, so you get a container registry, which is as of now blank. It is not showing that you have a storage account, a key vault that by default gets created. Okay, so if I create a new workspace, I'll create a new resource group. So I'm just going to say webinar, say OK, give it a name. So I'm going to say webinar workspace because I'm not going to keep this. I'm going to delete this towards the end. Go with East US because it's the cheapest. I mean, cost wise, because I need to save the cost. I only get some 10,000 or 11,000 monthly credit. Now what I'm going to do is, so if you see here, by default, these three, these four things get created. OK. Uh, it's not me who is doing that. It automatically assigns something and gets created. So I'm just going to say review plus create. So it's going to do a quick validation. It has passed. Just click on create. It will start creating one.
तो वो जो रिसोर्स हैज बीन क्रिएटेड आई एम गोइंग गो ओवर देयर एंड आई एम गोइंग टू लॉन्च द स्टूडियो सो इफ यू सी यू हैव एन ऑप्शन सो आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू गो अहेड एंड लॉन्च द स्टूडियो Okay, so like I said, there are three ways in which you can do. One is the notebook, which is the Python SDK. Second is the automated ML. So, like I told you all, if you in case you don't want to do coding or you don't want to create a pipeline, okay, it's totally fine. You just have to put in your data over here, and you have to just select which algorithms do you want, whether it's a classification or a regression data type. You just need to specify that, okay. and once that is done you select which algorithms you want and based on that it will create a model automatically okay and then you have to just select the best performing model okay and then designer is where you actually create pipeline okay so you can go for that so we're going to go with designer where we are going to create a pipeline there are two ways in which you can create one which has which are already been created by people you can use that or you can create your own so we are going to create our uh, one new pipeline over here so i'm going to go and create so when you are creating a pipeline so it's like a drag and drop feature so on the right hand side that you see it is your canvas okay this is where you are going to uh, organize things you're going to put it into a sequence and on the left hand side you have something called as component so like i told you um what kind of algorithm you want to use okay what kind of transformations you want to use because when you get data okay uh the data is not going to be 100% perfect in 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 whatever form it comes okay there are going to be some discrepancies there can be some missing values there can be some uh, spelling mistakes there can be some type error i mean type uh, problems like you are expecting a integer in uh, integer but you are getting a string so uh, the type of the data is going to matter right uh, then there can be missing values there can be uh, errors in the data right so you need to modify the data you need to transform the data okay and for that uh, the uh, person responsible for it is basically a data engineer so it's his job to clean the data make it perfect so that you can uh, create so you can train models on top of it or if you're a data analyst you get the data perfect so that you can do data analysis on top of that okay so you need to do that even over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a sample data if you recall i talked about the regression model where we are predicting the car price based on certain features right whether it's a car weight or it's the car size or it is the mileage and etc okay so i'm going to use that data so allow uh, you can even use your own data you'll have to come here and you'll have to add one okay that is another uh, whole course on it like i told you dp100 but uh, azure has made our thing our life easy it has given us some sample data so i'm going to pick up one of the sample data that is the automobile uh, price data okay the same data that i talked about is present over here so i'm just going to drag it over here onto the canvas and now i told you that the data is needs to be cleaned it needs to be transformed so what we are going to do is we are going to prepare the data so that it is uh, it is eligible to uh, you know to, uh, to be trained on the model to create a model on top of it so i am going to go with the transformation and in the transformation first of all we are going to remove one column so let's just preview this data first you see here i'll just expand this data so this is the data if you see you have the make whether it's a hatchback sedan convertible what kind of a uh, car it is okay then the wheels whether it's a forward river i mean uh, all of those things okay length height if you see and here you have the predicted you have the actual values you have the target so till highway mpg it becomes the features and price become the 
actual or the target or the label that is there. Okay, so this is how your data looks like. So in the data, sorry, I want to show you one more thing. I want, I don't require this particular column. That is, it isn't. I don't want this column called as normalized losses because it has, if you see a lot of missing values, okay, so it's better that if you remove it or you say, you know, remove this column, okay, if you scroll down and if even if you want to see, you can see there are lots of missing values. So even if you click on this, you will get a full review or statistics of that column, okay, so you can see how many missing values are there to this data. Okay, all of that information you will get over here. So I don't want this particular column. So I need to remove. So for that, we have a transformation component called as select columns. Okay, so I'm going to select columns in the data set. I'm 